Hello friends, in this video series lecture, we will go to discuss about analog communication subject in engineering. This is the first video lecture in this playlist. Okay, in this video, we will go to discuss about first what is analog communication and what is the block diagram of analog communication and what are the different types of blocks present in the analog communication. Okay, first let's see what is communication. Communication is nothing but sharing of information from one place to another place or transferring of information from one place to another place. Okay, then what is analog communication? Let's see here. Analog communication is a technique for sharing information by using analog signals. In analog communication, the information is sharing by using analog signals. Okay, now what is analog signal? Analog signal is nothing but continuous time signal. Continuous time signals are also called as analog signals. Okay. Here, I think you can understand what is the definition for analog communication. It is the communication technique for sharing information by using analog signals. Now, let's see the block diagram of analog communication system. This is the block diagram of analog communication system. Here, observe, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5 blocks here. First block is input transducer and the second block is modulator third block block is channel fourth one is demodulator fifth one is output transducer and finally output analog signal here the input of the this block diagram is input analog signal here we need to transmit the analog signal from the transmitter to receiver first here consider this is the transmitter part okay from here to here this two these two blocks are the transmitter parts and this channel is nothing but medium okay this channel is medium and this demodulator output translator output transducer these are receiver okay this is the transmitter and this is the receiver and in between transmitter and receiver we have a channel or it can also called as it is a medium okay first let's see what is input to transducer remember one point transducer is nothing but transducer is an electronic circuit it is used to convert the energy from one one energy to another energy or convert information from one energy to another energy okay here first we have analog signal input input analog signal input analog signal is nothing but our message signal what we want to transmit this is always uh, in the form of uh, uh, data or voice signal or video signal like that form okay now we need to transmit this input analog signal to the receiver that's why first we need to convert this voice signal into electrical signal okay electrical signal the Y signal is can't transmit as it is. That's why we need to transmit or we need to convert this analog input signal. Analog input signal is nothing but Y signal into electrical signal. That is done by the input transducer. This input transducer is used to convert the Y or Y signal into electrical signal. And at this, at this point, our signal is like electrical signal. And what is modulator? Modulator is also an electronic circuit. It is used to it is used to transmit our what call our transmit our message signal for a longer distance. Suppose assume this is a transmitter and this is a receiver. These are far away. These are the distance between the transmitter and receiver is so long. Then we need to transmit this message signal into longer distance. That's why we need to apply the modulation. Modulator is used to perform the modulation operation. Okay. After modulation, the analog signal is transmitted through the channel. This is the channel. Nowadays, communication channel is that thing but free space. And uh, communication channel is also known as the channel or medium which is used to transmit transmit the data from the transmitter to receiver or the gap between the transmitter to receiver or the medium between the transmitter to receiver okay this is a channel next after the channel we have demodulator at the receiver section 
we have the demodulator at the receiver section this demodulator is performs the reverse operation of modulator here at modulator we perform some operation due to that operation we can transmit the data for a more distance and this demodulator performs the reverse operation of the modulator okay after that operation it gives the signal to the output transducer okay here input transducer converts the voice signal into electrical signal and the output transducer performs the exact reverse operation of the input transducer that is the output transducer converts the electrical signal here the signal is like electrical signal at this point the signal is like electrical signal this electrical signal is converted as a voice signal at the output here observe at the output we have output analog signal analog signal is nothing but simply example of analog signal is voice signal okay here input also analog signal this is about block diagram of communic analog communication in the later videos we will go through this all blocks first modulator channel demodulator like that okay i hope you have understand thank you thank you for watching this video hello friends in this video we will go to discuss about message signal and carrier signal in analog communication okay first let's see what is message signal a message signal is nothing but as its name says that it carries the message or it carries the information what we want to send okay a signal which is having information or data to transmit from one place to another place that type of signal is known as message signal okay a signal which is having information or data to transmit from one place to another place that means a message signal is a signal which is having the data or information or anything that we want to transmit that uh, type of data signal is known as message signal and basically the frequency of message signal is low okay now suppose consider our y signal our y signal our voice signal is also message signal while we are talking to anyone in a phone then our voice signal is a message signal our voice signal frequency is very low that is in between 300 hertz to 3 kilo hertz that is it is very low frequencies okay example for message signal is voice signal audio signal voice signal and audio signal both are same and video signal like that okay this is about message signal and message signal looks like this message signal looks like this here the frequency of the message signal is low it is ranges from 300 hertz to 3 kilo hertz now let's see what is carrier signal the high frequency signal which has a certain amplitude frequency and but can but contains no information is called carrier signal here message signal is a signal which is having information but carrier signal does not contain any information it is having certain amplitudes and frequency it is used to carry the message signal for a long distance remember this point message signal is having information now if i want to transmit this information for a longer distance then carrier signal is used to carry the message signal carrier signal carries this message signal for a longer distance okay that's why we use the carrier signal is analog communication now here consider c of t is a carrier signal this is the carrier signal c of t and here observe the frequency of the c of t is very high here observe the frequency is low but here the frequency is very high and it is having uniform amplitude and uniform frequency this type of signals are used as a carrier signal to carry the message signal for a longer distance okay in the next video we will go to discuss about modulation thank you thank you for watching this video hello friends in this video we will go to discuss about modulation technique in analog communication modulation is the one of the important technique in analog communication for transmitting the wave for a longer distance okay for in order to transmit a message signal for a longer distance we need to apply the modulation okay first let's see what is the definition for modulation the process of changing the characteristics of carrier signal in accordance with the amplitude of message signal this process is known as modulation 
here we have two types of signals in modulation technique those are first one is carrier signal and the next one is message signal in what is carrier signal and what is message signal already discussed in your previous video message signal is nothing but the signal which is having information to transmit carrier signal is a signal which is used to help uh, help to carry this message signal and the modulation technique is also a technique which is which superimpose the message signal into a high frequency carrier signal or we can also call the characteristics of carrier signal is changes in accordance with the amplitude of the message signal this means if the amplitude of the message signal is increasing then the characteristics also increasing the characteristics means is the frequency amplitude or phase like that okay and if the amplitude of the message signal is decreasing then the corresponding characteristics also decreasing now this type of technique is known as modulation okay let's see what is the use of modulation by using modulation we can transmit the signal for a longer distance suppose here assume this is our message signal and this is our carrier signal high frequency carrier signal the the process of changing the characteristics of carrier signal this is carrier signal this is message signal the process of changing the characteristics of carrier signal in accordance with the amplitude of message signal here observe this is the peak amplitude of the message signal and this is the negative peak amplitude of the message signal whenever we are we are in peak amplitude of the message signal then the characteristics of the carrier signal is high it also increased whenever we are at the negative peak of the message signal then the characteristics also low okay that type of variation of carrier signal in according to the message signal is known as modulation and we have mainly there are two types of modulations one is amplitude modulation another one is angle modulation okay remember this we have two types of modulations one is amplitude modulation another one is angle modulation this type of modulations we will discuss in our later videos let's see this note modulator is an electronic device modulator is an electronic device which is having two inputs here already we discussed what are those inputs one is carrier signal another one is message signal which is having two inputs those are message signal and carrier signal and it is having one output that is modulated signal modulated signal is the output of the modulator and the message signal and carrier signal are the input of the modulator here modulated signal in modulated signal the message signal low frequency message signal is superimposed in the high frequency carrier signal that is we discussed in the later videos in the later video or in the next video in we will go to discuss about what is amplitude modulation thank you thank you for watching this video hello friends in this video we will go to discuss about amplitude modulation in analog communication it is the one of the important classification of modulation okay the first classification of modulation is amplitude modulation let's see what is the definition of amplitude modulation the process of changing the amplitude of a carrier signal in according to the instantaneous amplitude of the message signal here here also we have two signals one is carrier signal another one is message signal here in amplitude modulation the amplitude of the carrier signal is changes in according to the amplitude of the message signal that means if the amplitude of the message signal is increasing then automatically the amplitude of the carrier signal also increasing if the amplitude of the message signal is decreasing then automatically the amplitude of the carrier signal is also decreasing okay let's see again the process of changing the amplitude of carrier signal in according to the instantaneous amplitude of message signal in according to the instantaneous amplitude of message signal carrier signal amplitude also changing now let's see this waveforms then you can understand very betterly okay assume this is a message signal it is a low frequency message signal we know message signal is always have low frequencies that is from 300 hz to 3 kilo hz this is the message signal frequency this is the low frequency message signal and this point and this 
this point are the zero crossing points okay and let's see carrier signal this is the high frequency carrier signal here observe the frequency of the carrier signal is very high that is from 3 kilo hedges hedges greater than 3 kilo hedges okay this frequency is very high when compared to the message signal and according to the amplitude modulation the process of changing the amplitude of the carrier signal in according to the instantaneous amplitude of the message signal here in according to this amplitude of the message signal this carrier signal also changing now first let's see here the message signal is increasing gradually and at this point it is the it is having maximum amplitude and it is it is decreasing gradually when compared to the previous values here it is decreasing and when when we come to this point it is the minimum amplitude of the message signal and again it is increasing like a sinus order okay now observe here in amplitude modulation the modulating signal looks like if we have two message signal on the above and below the axis suppose the same message signal is drawn here observe the same message signal is drawn here and at the bottom side also the same message signal is drawn here but opposite in time but opposite in amplitude not a time but opposite amplitude the same message signal is drawn here also this is nothing but it is the first first side band and it is the second side band the above and below signals are observe this is one signal this is one signal and here also this is one signal this is the first side band this is the second side band okay in between the side bands we have a carrier this is the carrier here observe whenever we have this at this point then the amplitude of the carrier is increasing because here the amplitude of the message signal is more at that point the amplitude of the carrier should also more according to the amplitude modulation so here observe here amplitude is more but here observe the amplitude of the message signal is very less that's why the amplitude of the carrier signal also will become less here observe at this point consider a line at the, from this point here observe the amplitude is low and again the amplitude is increasing here in message signal in modulating signal also amplitude is increasing this means the amplitude of the carrier signal is varying in according to the amplitude of the message signal this is the modulated signal that is nothing but modulation this is the about amplitude modulation thank you thank you for watching this video in the next videos we'll go to discuss about what are the different types of amplitude modulations okay